Hey, I, you know, I'm able to start up a C17 on a Steam Deck. You can see, yes, the engines are starting to spin. Everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about one of my most favorite subjects once again, and that is flight simulator gaming setup stuff. And everybody, here we have something very special in this box that I bought for myself of my own money. And it says interesting things on the moon in a Ferris wheel. Dans le train. Everybody, of course, I'm talking today about the Steam Deck. You know, it has been quite a few years now since Valve came out with their, you know, mobile gaming setup, you know, handheld gaming computer, which is a cool idea. This thing can practically run any games in the Steam Store, which sounds very intriguing because that will mean that you can theoretically play the Microsoft Flight Simulator on the go. And we shall do that. It comes here with a, with a box like that. There we go, it's already a little dirty because I've already used it. Of course, I've downloaded already the 500,000 gigabytes that the Microsoft Flight Simulator requires for installation. I bought the Steam Deck costs 500 bucks in the store. This is the OLED version with 500 gigabytes. That's enough for running the Flight Simulator. And as you can see, the system has already loaded up. All right, let's get rid of this here. Good thing is, of course, in order for you guys to see anything, I can hook this guy up to a USB-C hub that has HDMI, so I can plug it directly into a recorder. Aha, and there we go. Now we have actual screen recording here from the Steam Deck. Problem is whenever you have HDMI plugged in, the screen here becomes unusable. So we sacrifice kind of the touch screen. Um, it still works, actually. It's just a kind of a ghost touch screen. Luckily for me, I already had bought the flight simulator on Steam, and so I can directly install it and just press play. And let me tell you, the flight simulator, although it officially isn't supported, works relatively well on the Steam Deck. It is pretty crazy, but let's check it out first. Up here we have an FPS counter, and this will come in very interesting. All right, so welcome to the main menu of the flight simulator, and we can already navigate around with our joystick. Yes, this thing kind of you know emulates a Xbox controller, and that works relatively well. I mean, lots of people play on Xbox; it's not too bad at all. And here we can select our airplanes that we would like. By come on, let's get into an A320. Let's select a location here, which obviously yes works beautifully. Let's go ahead and spawn into Saint Bartholomew. Come on, it's Swiss Air One after all. You can already tell, you know, the resolution is quite low. The screen resolution is low indeed. I mean, it's running only at 720p, which is fine. It's not a big display. And it allows this thing to actually have quite some performance. If you go by the way, you can once again see how the flight center thinks that these knobs here are from an Xbox controller. After all, this is meant for handheld. Aha, there we go. Welcome to St. Bartholomew. It runs. It runs! We can play a mobile flight simulator. You can see the FPS are actually usable. 27 F I mean, it's not like a shooter game that you need any precision for. And you can already see, well, it has the classical Xbox thing. I already made a video about, you know, using an Xbox controller for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I wouldn't want to be starting up and flying a very complicated airplane on that setup. But look, anti-ice, that's okay. But when it comes to, like, having multiple switch options, maybe here in the wipers, you can, there you go. You have to select it first, then set up the vi wipers. And then you have to press B to quit that setting, you know. It's a bit annoying, but it works. All right, so classical Xbox assignments. So we're gonna press A to power like that. Beautiful. All right, so the flaps, let's put them down as well. We can do that by pressing the cross button right here. Half flaps, which is good. We can see, yes, of course, this little uh, thumbstick does control the joystick in the airplane. Let's go ahead now and release the brakes. And I can feel something that you can't see, and that is, of course, some haptic feedback here on this Steam Deck. It kind of is rumbling a little bit to resemble rumble here. Are we, are we just taking off right now? Yeah! We've been able to depart out of St. Bartholomew Airport, and you can see in the FPS counter, this is... <laughs> This is actually running, this is running pretty well. I'm quite surprised. Once again, we can put the landing gear up here, like that. Now, let's maybe see, this is our graphics option, set to medium, which is preferred. Um, and let me tell you, I mean, we're on a small screen. This is obviously not going to be a competition to my big computer in the city, city L. Obviously not, but 
It's not trying to do that. I mean, it's hard to show you the sensation of playing on a handheld thing here on camera. I'm trying. Try, I'm trying real hard to show this to you. Here we go, I'm playing Microsoft Flight Simulator and I'm getting 33 FPS. Now of course we're in the middle of the ocean, we shall do some more performance tests. Let me spawn into Los Angeles, a lot of city there. Look at that, I can select a new location. Los Angeles International, that's a lot of city there. I'm tempted to try out a bit of a more complex airliner, the A310. I don't know, I'm not even sure if that's gonna work. And uh, oh, that crashed a flight simulator for some reason. All right, that uh, that hasn't worked. All right, so welcome to the skies of Los Angeles, and the thing hasn't crashed. A320 works just fine. I guess he wouldn't want to be flying around a very complex airplane anyway. Now, uh, there you go, FPS is totally all right. We have an AI plane in behind us. And you know, in medium settings on a small screen like this, once again, it's not half bad. Yeah, okay, maybe 20 frames per second. It's totally fine for flight simming. Yeah, you can see the skyline too. Now, the thing is, I'm not a big fan though of these Joy-Cons here. It's okay, but it's obviously never going to somewhat be able to simulate this down there. Luckily, we have once again a USB hub right here. And we can, of course, plug in something. This is the Thrustmaster controller, the joystick, and we can just plug in the USB cable right here like that yes and it will actually detect the thrustmaster like that and of course this work oh this work you know it even does the rudder here that's fine i've already kind of set up how this should work you can see now this is a whole lot better i can assign a ton of controls i mean you know it kind of ruins the purpose of <laughs> having this kind of portable setup. I mean, this is running on what is not bigger than an iPad. An iPad probably wouldn't handle all of this. Look at that, LA looks totally fine. Good, well, we're on a very, very stable approach that I very much like. We can slightly hear the fan. I mean, this thing is no louder than my PC. This is not too bad. All right, that's been a bit of a hard landing and a bit of a bounce, but that is absolutely okay. Now I can apply the brakes here to this airplane. This plane now, I haven't set up reverse thrust, but there we go. We are stopping at 16 frames per second. This is one of the biggest airports in the world. I kind of do get a slight performance issue here. That's totally fine. Everybody, we've done our first landing. A very satisfactory one here in on the Steam Deck here using a controller. This is definitely not bad at all. Now, there are a lot of people who play the flight simulator on Xbox, which is totally fine. But one problem they have is definitely add-ons. I mean, yes, we have the Marketplace also available for this thing. So it kind of purchases things through Steam and it works. I mean, we can buy things and download things. That's also on Xbox, but on Xbox you can't, you know, access the community folder to go on flightsim.to like the PC guys, like I always do, and download random things, like the weed airplane. The good thing is that this thing is practically a handheld computer. We can switch to desktop. Now you can see exactly what I'm doing. This is kind of like running on a Linux-based system, and something I've already saved down here is the community folder. Can you tell that? Like that. This is the community folder of the Microsoft Flight Simulator, which actually lets us install external add-ons. We can use the Chrome browser to perhaps go to flightsim.to. Yes, and we can even download the Airbus A420 that I was talking about. Download now. There we go. Come on, finish now. There we go, extract it and just put it into the community here. I'm also installing right now a C-17 as well as a custom airport called Shark's Teeth. I made a video about this a long time ago and open the Microsoft Flight Simulator just like that. All right now, this is actually better. I can uh, just directly mirror the screen in desktop mode. Let me see if all our add-ons are here. There we go, A420. And we also have our little add-on airport right here, the Shark Teeth Airfield. It works, let's spawn in. All right, so welcome to the top of a mountain. Shark Teeth Airfield. This seems to work relatively well. Um, also, the performance isn't as poor as I expected here. Desktop mode, go outside here. Yes! Oh, uh, all right, there's a, it's a bit choppy of frames per second. You know, it might not look great on video at all, but it's totally fine here on the screen. It has some, like, it's really, really bright, the screen as well. You can very much tell that in the difference between the laptop and this thing. Let's go ahead and actually take off right here. Jeez, this is stupid. Yes! Here we are now taking off from Shark Teeth Airport. You can see the custom building, not too shabby. We can also once again feel there's some haptic feedback, which I found very interesting. Oh, Jesus. Oh, 
I've cracked the 420. All right, there you go. We can put the paper landing gear up. And it does have actual landing gear animation. Here we are flying through the skies. This is not actually half bad. There we go. Look at that. This is insanely stupid of an airplane. Let's actually try an actual one. Now that we know add-ons do work. All right, so welcome to Gibraltar Air Base. There we go, that seems to run quite well. And it's time to spawn into the C-17 that I had installed earlier. You can see, actually, you know, the graphics aren't bad at all. This is uh, the Gibraltar terminal. There we go, take a look at that, beautiful. We can see also we've got some covers on, which, you know, this is a relatively sophisticated freeware add-on, the C-17, that's for sure. We even have a little tablet here, which you can, for example, remove the cones. Uh, it's just a bit hard to hit. Ah, there you go. Yes, everybody, we've removed that. It's rather a question of, do you want to have a sophisticated aircraft system anyway on a small screen like this? Take a look, APU, this is the APU. Ah, that seems to run very well. Oh, that was a bit of a lag right there. APU on, we're doing that. Number two, number three, number four. Let's see if that works. Uh, yeah, it does, I, I think, and one's coming up. Hey, I, you know, I've, I'm able to start up a C-17 on a Steam Deck. You can see, yes, the engines are starting to spin just as they should take a look. Honestly, this is actually not bad, especially here now with a C-17 add-on. Beautiful. Right, there we go. I think we've now kind of established that the Steam Deck actually does its job quite well, despite, you know, Microsoft flights and that are not being officially supported. This runs relatively well. So let me try to land, actually, as well. Come on, let's try to get that right at least. It's just rather a question of, well, is the Steam Deck really as a platform suitable for flight simming? Of course, this is a small screen and you have Joy-Cons that don't really work too well with airplanes. Maybe if you steered a submarine, this would work. But I think this gaming console rather has its strengths than other games like GTA 5. I think GTA 5 would be amazing on this thing. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, take a look at how Microsoft is running. Like, that is genuinely impressive. Could you build better PCs, better performing PCs for the price of 500 bucks? I'm pretty sure, yes. By the way, let's... Oh, we're very fast. Oh, I still have to get used to the rudder here on the joystick, but there you go. We can stop now. That's actually worked pretty well. It's not been a good landing. For me, this is definitely not a flight sim thing. I wouldn't want to be playing a flight simulator on the go. The problem is also, of course, with the Microsoft flight simulator, at least, that you have to always have internet, which um, on the go isn't really works well together. One big aspect that people were concerned about is battery life as well. The idea of starting an hour-long flight without the battery lasting for you to last through that flight. So far, I've learned the battery is really big. I mean, this is a really big console, and this will last you through a flight. I mean, you do have power banks these days as well. That's nothing I'm concerned about. So I think the Steam Deck is quite Swiss 01 approved. For me personally, though, I'd, I'd rather just sit at the computer. I mean, where else am I going to go? I don't have a life. I don't go outside.